Good evening and welcome to this, the first episode of the Carbon Chronicles with myself and the ever irrepressible Latimer Alder. Latimer, where have you been and how have you been getting on? Oh, John, it's great to talk. It's been a long time since we did one of these together. Oh, I've been around and about, around and about climate, and around and about doing lots of other things. <clears throat> but it was uh, great to hear from you recently to, to get together and do another little thing to, for the first time. Um, cool. Carbon Chronicles sounds like a great title to me. It does indeed. And why are we calling it the Carbon Chronicles? I I think, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's because that we're going to be looking at the carbon cycle, how it's supposed to be affecting climate change, climate change itself, and more more than that, the politics of why people are driving us towards net zero for 2030. Exactly. And um, certainly in the UK, since we've got a new government, that, that drive is going on overdrive and uh, it's rising up the political agenda. And that's, uh, I think, quite, quite an interesting thing which I want to talk about in my little presentation today. Well, I'm I'm enraptured to hear it. Please go ahead. You're easily pleased. <laughs> I am. Okay, well, let, let's go. <laughs> Nothing changes. Back at a crisp and an orange juice in the pub. <laughs> car, like, and you're happy, buddy. Yep. I thought I'd call tonight's presentation Decarbonising the UK Grid, because that's a very hot topic for us today uh, in the UK. Uh, and I think it's got some lessons, perhaps, for, for the rest of the world as well. So if anybody's interested in that, please bear with me. We got a new Labour government uh, two months ago. Uh, the Secretary of State for Energy, Security and Net Zero, which is an interesting concept because they're kind of con contradictory um, objectives, is a guy called Ed Miliband. And Ed Miliband has <laughs> yeah. been around UK politics for a long time. He was at one point the leader of the Labour Party lost an election to, I think, David Cameron way back in about 2015. Yes, uh, it, 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 this is the guy that has the most the most strangest face. It's as if it was actually built for spitting image. He is, he is a, a somewhat <laughs> odd-looking character, I must say. Anyway, on his arrival at the, the ministry, he, he issued a public statement of, of what he'd said to his staff, and here it is. I've taken the exact words and put it up. Our department will be at the heart of the new government's agenda. It was one of the Prime Minister's five national missions to make Britain an energy superpower with zero carbon electricity by 2030. Now, that's a very interesting thought. 2030 is t less than, fewer than 2,000 days away. And what he's saying is all our electricity will be zero carbon and that basically means not made from fossil fuels in any way zero carbon says no That's fossil going to be tricky ah watch this space it's very tricky and okay. i was vaguely thinking about this and one of the things if you know me elsewhere you'll know that i'm active on twitter i've been tweeting since 10 years or so and uh, forty thousand followers or whatever so few people are interested in what i say and one thing i do occasionally in the morning is just look at the ways the energy the electricity of the uk is being made and there's some great websites this is one called grid watch and i happened to look at it yesterday morning at the time shown on the top of the graph and it tells us this is great it tells us in some oh excuse me gone too far in some detail a little snapshot of how the energy the electricity is being was being made at Quarter past six yesterday morning, which is just about dawn. It was just about getting light. I'm an early bird. The doggy got me up, so I started mm -hmm. looking. And what I'd like to do is just run you through this chart so you fully understand it before we move on to the, the discussion that comes from it. And what it's telling us here is for each line here, and there's what, getting on for 20 of them, yeah. each line represents a particular way of making electricity. So if we look at the top line, it says it's nuclear. We all know about nuclear power stations. We have those in there. Yep. And then the bar represents how much of our um, electricity is being made by yeah. that method. So yeah. here it says nuclear, 4.81 gigawatts. Gigawatts is a measure of mm -hmm. uh, electricity production. Don't worry about what it means, but just know that is the unit. So when you see yeah. GW, the unit. Okay. 
and it's saying 16%. So what it tells us here is nuclear is making 4.8. If you look down here against this chart, the scale here, 4.8 units, and that is 16% of our total en electricity production at this time when mm -hmm. that snapshot was taken. And and being something of a nuclear proponent, I'd like to point out, if I may, that, that nuclear power isn't very quick at ramping up and down. So it tends to produce the same amount of power all the time unless you're actually going to turn the thing down for an extended period of yeah. time. So well, it's, not, that, that's a, it's, it's not very reactive. That's a point I was going to make a little later on, but thanks oh, for that. Yes, you're sorry. absolutely right. It isn't very reactive. But bear with us going through these things first, mm -hmm. and then we'll look yep. at the implications a little later on. Next one down is this thing called CCGT. CCGT basically means gas. Yeah, We're burning gas, just like we burn gas in our home heating, only this time we're burning gas to heat some water, to make some steam, to make electricity. And at this point, it was 45% of the total, and it was 13.9 gigawatts. So the big chunk of all this electricity came from burning gas. The next one down is a thing called biomass. Biomass really should be called firewood. We do something very strange in the UK. You may have heard a thing called Drax. Yeah. We chop trees in America. We ship them across the Atlantic. We burn them in Yorkshire and we call them um, carbon neutral renewables. Even the BBC have done a programme saying this is a con, but leave that one aside. Yeah. That, this is the big one that we need to worry about. This is wind power. It's all the windmills. Oh, we've had 20, 30 years of, quotes, investment in wind power in the North Sea. And we've got 3% of our total electricity coming from all that investment, just three. This is a little bit after dawn, so solar is up to 12%. That's quite high. For quite solar. high. And coal, which we are vilified yeah. for, is 3%. Mm -hmm. oh, we've, got, we've just got one coal-powered power station left, and that's all it is. Oil and, and oil turbines we don't really use at all. There's a thing called pumped hydro. Pumped yeah. hydro we'll look at a bit later on, is also the thing that says we pump some water up a hill and when into a reservoir, and when, when we need it, it comes down again and we can make more hydroelectricity with it. Yeah. We've got a couple of pumped hydro, I think three pumped hydro stations in the UK, but that's all we have. Beneath that, every line here is called IC. IC is an interconnector, yeah. and this is really just us buying and selling electricity to and from France and the Netherlands and Ireland and, and, and. And that's great. We can buy electricity from France if they've got some spare. We buy some from Norway. We send it back again sometimes well. So there's some trading going on. But yeah. these are all down in the few percent levels. The thing I want you to remember is that together, gas and coal, these are fossil fuel things, make nearly half of the electricity. Does that, is that clear, John? Did you, yep, did you follow absolutely. that? absolutely. Spot on. Yep, got that. Okay. So I tweeted a little bit before that, actually, when wind was, wind was higher and gas was higher and solar was lower, but this was the question I was asking. What is making UK's electricity right now? Gas is 57%, wind is 5%, coal is 2 But the key point here is, the plan that Mr. Miliband suggests is there will be no gas or coal by 2030. Right? That's what he said. Zero carbon electricity. Yep. By that means those two things, the big two, half of our electricity supply will not be there. We cannot use it by 2030. Okay. That's what the carbonized grid means. And so the big question is, what keeps the lights on? Good. Oh. It's a valid question. It's a valid question. And... I expected this tweet to get, you know, the usual hundred or so people interested over a day, um, a bit of discussion, but it was yeah. not really any more than that. But instead it went almost viral. Something like 200,000 people in around the world have seen it. Best part of 1,500 people have retweeted it. There's 600 replies and 5,000 likes or something, which is Mm -hmm. I normally get good response to a tweet, but this is phenomenally good response to it. Yeah. So I've hit a nerve somewhere, I think, yeah. that people are really interested in this. And to remind ourselves what the problem is, to keep the lights on, you need continuous power. And if you have 
a gap in the power supply, you get power cuts. Yeah. Power cut, and the, and the what the analogy I use is power keeping power going is is like breathing. You got to carry on doing it. You can't just say, suddenly say, "Well, I think I'll stop breathing today," but tomorrow, I'll breathe twice as fast to make up for it, and so my average will be fine. <laughs> and a lot of people say, "Well, on average." You know, with gas and so it's only so small, you won't you won't get any power cuts. Not like that. If the supply falls below the demand, there will be power cuts. There is no alternative. Electricity. Yeah. And I, I remember. I'm, I mean, you'll have lived through them as well. Um, I remember power cuts in the seventies. Exactly. I remember going to the pub with my dad when I was sixteen and getting addicted to pubs, which I'm now off. But in those days, I thought it was wonderful. Yeah, pub candles and grown ups talking to each other. Bloody hell! I thought this was super. And we we made toast on the gas fire because yeah, at yeah. that point, things Absolutely. like gas fires didn't need the electricity to run. But nowadays, exactly. try running, try running. Well, you can't run central heating even if it's gas powered. Yeah, exactly. And your heat pumps will be useless. <laughs> Indeed, your heat pumps will be useless and your EVs won't be much good on them. Exactly. So those, those are, that is the thing about power cuts. Electricity is an immediately perishable commodity. You can't sensibly store it in big quantities. Mm -hmm. and we'll come and look at that in a moment. So we're going back to our chart then, what are we going to try and do to replace this big orange thing that we're not going to have because Mr... Milliband will have ab abolished it. And what we're we going to try and do to replace the, the black thing. And the Twitter thing was very interesting because I got huge amounts of things. But uh, can we expand solar is the first thing. Well, solar's <laughs> fine and you can expand it as, as long as it's not dark. Well, <laughs> so it yeah. does not work in the dark. That's the whole point about it. And, and the UK is quite far north. So while we get lovely long summers, nights, yeah. Yeah, days, yeah. we get pretty short winter days. We do, don't we? Yeah. And it's, there's a sort of a difference in the profile. We could look at that if you wanted. But by about, you get 10 times more solar power in a day in the summer than you do in the winter. Yeah. And that's just, and there's nothing we can do about it. You can't, Mr. Miniman can't legislate for that. That's geography of the way the earth tilts and where we are on the earth. So expanding solar isn't really going to work unless you put so much solar there that it, you know, we were overwhelmed with it in the summer. But it still wouldn't work wherever it is at night because solar doesn't work. So the answer to our thing, we can't replace the backup, the gas with solar because it ain't there. It's not going to work. OK, well, let's look at the next thing. How about more wind? We've done our 20 years of, exp of wind. Well, yeah. Yes, up to a point, if you carried on expanding the wind. Now, that if you go back to the numbers, we had 45% of gas and 3% of wind. So we'd need to expand wind 15 times to cover for that gas with the weather as it was. Right? Three times 15 is 45. <sighs> yeah, 15 times more windmills than we've managed to build in the last 20, 25 years of really going for wind as a power. That's not going to happen. It's certainly not going to happen by 2030. Well, and even it, it, it doesn't take into account those days or those nights even when there's just no wind. That's my next point, John, because it, it doesn't take into account the picture in the chart here, which basically says if there's no wind, it doesn't matter where you've got one or a hundred or a thousand windmills, yeah. you get no power. And this uh, is what the, the little cartoon is trying to show you. and you know what else it doesn't take into account it doesn't Incorrect. take into account those times when there's too much wind ah different question and you can't run the windmill because it was yeah. over speed yeah well let's leave that aside for the moment let's just stick with this one that says there will be times and they can be quite yeah. lengthy times it can be days or weeks even where mm -hmm. wind is at a very low ebb and we need to cover something cover it with something so that's not going to work either. Expanding wind will not fill the gap for the gas that we show, that we. Now, lots and lots and lots of people on Twitter keep telling me about battery storage, and yeah. I suspect you know they've got a battery in their laptop, as I have now, uh, or in their mobile, or in their lawnmower, or in their Hoover, or in their car, and they think, well, there we are, back. We've done batteries. Batteries are. Well, yes. 
But until you start to put some numbers into your, your question, let's look at this thing, this thing I've got a picture of here. This is an, uh, an installation at Cottingham, just outside Beverley, in, um, near Hull in East Yorkshire. Yeah. Uh, famously has a pub called the Duke of Cottingham, where Bill Nelson from Bebop Deluxe once sang, played badly at the Duke to almost no applause on <laughs> act victim, I think, but that's a very long time. <laughs> okay. It's other claim to fame apart from the fact Bill was there, is this battery installation. This battery installation is the biggest battery in Europe. Okay. Oh, that is that is surpassed the one that was built in where was it France? Uh, well, certainly the BBC claimed when it opened right. last year it was the biggest battery in Europe. Okay, right, and okay. it it covers quite a lot of ground. You can look at that; that's five acres of ground. You can see just by the size of the trucks and so forth in the left here. Yeah, these are you know, transit vans and so forth, and and you know ten ton trucks. This is a big installation. There's a lot of it. Yeah. You'll be pleased to know we got a lot of things for our money because it cost 75 million quid. Okay. Right? A lot of money. So there's the biggest battery in Europe, 75 million quid, five acres. Okay. The question you might want to ask is how long, say you say you wanted to run the UK's power grid off okay. the, all these batteries, how long would it last? Would it last us for a day or an hour or a week or a minute? I suspect we might even be kiting to make a cup of tea. Well, let me tell you how long it would last. If we did it and we said, run the UK off this thing, in 15 seconds, it ah, would be exhausted. It 15 would have seconds? Back. 15 seconds. Okay, but that's surely, the biggest sh surely it's only there as a kind of, surely it would only be there as a, a you know, to smooth the supply, so to speak. Well, if, if that's the case, then that, all it's doing is it's smoothing supplies. It's not covering for the wind that we haven't got because you, we just yeah. saw 5% okay. of our electricity comes from wind. We've got to cover that 45%. Yeah, well, that's right, good. okay. So, I mean, as a layman, right, 15 seconds isn't going to cut it. Um, no. The only thing I could see that being useful for is doing something like smoothing a supply, you know, basically. And, and indeed, that that is how they how it is indeed being used right and okay there may be reason for it but the point being this is the biggest battery in europe and it could only power uk for 15 seconds yeah so, so we can conclude that the concept of battery storage really isn't going to help us very much it's just a hundred to a thousand times less good than it needs to be now it could be in some sort of fairy dreamland, that just around the corner next week, somebody's going to say, I can make a battery 100 times better. If that happens, then the game is changed. But we've been developing batteries for 224 years, since Mr. Volta in Italy in 1800 developed the first one. And this is as far as we've got in 224 years. Okay. Um... So when everybody telling us battery storage is going to be the answer, have not done the sums to say how how well does it fit and the answer is it, it's puny compared with the task okay so so there was talk at some point of of using people's cars as ah, battery well, devices that's great yeah come why don't we tell you what rather than have petrol stations why don't we let people come and siphon the petrol out of your petrol tank overnight <laughs> yeah. as well because yeah. that's, that's what it is. I know, I know, and, and it comes to that point, you know, it's been dark all night, you've had to use the power to keep the hospital going or whatever, and yeah. um, when you jump in your car in the morning, instead of being nicely charged, it's yeah. sitting on zero and you can't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, because you're using using it to to charge up somebody else's EV. So you yeah. Can't, this, I yeah. mean, this is, you know, why do people have lockable fuel caps? Precisely because they don't want people to steal it. Yeah. Precious hard-earned fuel. And the same thing applies to that. So I, I will go no further with that as an idea. Right. It's so, equally it's equally nowhere near big enough for the sort of task. So we looked at batteries, which had huge numbers of people supporting the, on, on Twitter, but actually when you look at it, doesn't cut the mustard. Yeah. And the other, most, the other one that everybody loved was this thing called pumped hydro. Well, pumped hydro is fine. Simple concept. You've got, a high reservoir and a low reservoir. You pump water 
using some sort of spare energy that you just happen to have lying around um, from the bottom to the top. And when you want to uh, make some electricity, you let, you let the water run down through a turbine and you get electricity from your pumped hydro. Well, yes, that's that's a nice way of doing it. And it's a fairly, fairly sort of environmentally friendly way of storing things just by effectively pumping water uphill. So you might argue that having um, huge great dams, and this is the dam at, I think, De Norwig in, in Wales, might be considered to be ruining the highlands or ruining the Snowdonia or wherever it is. Nonetheless, it does work. There mm-hmm. are three installations in the UK, and we use them all the time. If you go back to that chart I showed right at the very beginning, you can see just yeah. a tiny little dark blue sliver of pumped hydro is producing 1% or 2%. Yep. And that's the point. Pumped hydro is a one or two percent thing. We looked at the battery and we thought we saw that the battery would, the biggest battery in Europe would last 15 seconds. The thing about pumped hydro is it's a bit longer than that. Mm -hmm. Put them all together, all the three sites, and they will last for 15 minutes. So 15 minutes would run all of the UK's uh, power supply. That's half half an episode of EastEnders, folks, or Corrie or whatever you're Soap off choices, but that's it. 15 minutes. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of engineering going on in an awful lot of difficult country. It has to be difficult country to get the big height difference that you need from one to the other. You can't do pumped hydro in East Anglia where it's flat. It won't work. You've got to have a head of water. And doing all this stuff takes a, a lot of money, a lot of engineering and a lot of time. Whatever whatever else it is, we aren't suddenly going to go from 15 minutes to 15 hours worth in 2,000 days. We're probably not going to do it in 2,000 years, to be honest. So pumped hydro is also off the list of things that are going to replace our um, uh, wind, uh, gas power that we're abolishing. You mentioned earlier on about nuclear, and nuclear, absolutely right. Nuclear is great at carrying on doing what it's doing. It's not great at moving up and down. Just the sheer technology says you've got this big thing. It's producing a certain amount of heat and a certain amount of heat produces a certain amount of electricity. You can't turn it up or down very much. So nuclear is off the list. Doesn't leave us very much of the things that we could have used. You could, I suppose, expand the biomass by install, by chopping down more trees in Georgia, USA and shipping them over here. In a diesel powered ship, but that's really probably not going to be yeah, I mean, just when just you... just as an aside. Yeah. Do, you, do you know how many trees they chop down in Scotland to build wind, wind turbines? I think you told me it was 65 million, yeah, 63 million, I believe. 63 million trees chopped down. Well, yeah. we had to set we had to destroy the destroy the wilderness to save it. That's what about? Thing. What about these other things they've been talking about, like, you know, giant flywheels and stuff like that? Is yeah, there a they're all pie in, for that? They're all pie in the sky. Oh, great. You know, the, the people talk about well, there's thermal thermal storage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's hot water bottles. We've done those. I had one as a kid. It's a big yeah. form of hot water bottle. There's gravity storage. Well, gravity storage is what you have in a grandfather clock when you wind up the weights. We've yeah. done all that. That's medieval technology. There's all sorts of things that, when you look at it, are nothing new whatsoever, just different ways of doing it. And they're still not going to provide the sorts of sizes of stuff that we need Yeah, within okay. a, within any reasonable time scale. The, um, the thing is, the amount of electricity we use is so big compared with all the rest. Yep. So when we come to a sort of the, the end of this little presentation, the answer, unfortunately, to my, que- my original question, so what will keep the lights on, is there are none. There is nothing on the horizon that's going to be available in the sizes we need within the 2,000 days that Mr. Miliband has set us. And the only consequence that there is, is we will have power cuts. It's inevitable. You cannot avoid that unless, of course, somebody comes up with that magic new Wonderful invention that we're all hoping is there tomorrow and can turn it into production yeah. grid scale thing within five years. So there I isn't, there isn't, I don't enough, think that's going to happen. There isn't enough time to build even the nuclear power station between now and exactly. 
So Somebody th- told me about a pumped hydro system in Switzerland and said, wasn't it wonderful? And I thought, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Lovely picture. Took them 14 years to build it. So yeah. you ain't going to get a pumped hydro system up and running before 2030 either. And None and of these things are going to happen. Switzerland has got massive height differences. Exactly. So Switzerland <laughs> makes it difficult. That's why we, you go skiing there and glaciers and stuff. Yeah, yeah we, we don't. To be fair, I mean, our biggest yeah. mountain's just over 4,000 feet. Indeed, so. but, but you know, the Highlands of Scotland do have a decent, you know, you can get 1,000 feet. That's a, that, that gets you quite yeah. a lot of power, but it's okay. only in a few few places that it's feasible to do it. Yeah. So and, and so that's kind of the end of what I prepared, John. Okay, well, then I can only see there's only one possible answer here. You know, the, there's, there's only one answer, and that answer is you can't do it. You just can't do it, Ed. Well, Ed can't do it. I'm, I'm, I've come to that conclusion as well. So, two, th- one of two things is going to happen. Either Ed's going to carry on not doing it until just before the next election. Ouch! It becomes very obvious that he's failed. Yeah. Or reality sets in and he gets his ass kicked out of the building some years before that. <laughs> I don't know which it's going to be, but it clearly is not going to be. Covering ourselves in glory. Look, we achieved our objective, the the mad objective that we set ourselves, he, because it cannot be done. He's sitting there right now, and he's thinking something will come along and save my bacon. That that's all he can be thinking. Exactly. Or or he doesn't understand this presentation, and yeah, you know, we've not yeah. looked at anything that's difficult. You no. don't need a degree in electrical engineering or so forth. You just need to be able to look at that original chart, which I'll go back to now. And say, okay, what's going to happen when we take away the orange and the black bit? Yeah. That's all it is. Looking at that, and and the answer is power cuts. And and like you said, they're actually cheating with some of this other stuff as well when it comes to yeah. net zero, like like the Drax thing, you know, the yeah, shipping yeah. the biomass over and and diesel powered that, ships. That, that's a, that's an accounting. That's an accountant's yeah. trick. Right? And, that's what that is. And then there's all the. The gear oil that's required for all the wind turbines. Oh, there's there, there's hundreds of little tweaks there. And where you, the more the more you yeah. look, the more you get to the and all the this, this stinks. But all uh, the, the concrete you need to anchor those massive turbines yeah, and yeah, and and then you you heard about Scottish Power, didn't you? Uh, tell me. So during the winter in Scotland, when the wind isn't blowing and it gets pretty cold. They have to keep the wind turbines turning or they'll freeze up. And then, obviously, there will be chaos if the wind blows and the gearbox is frozen. Yeah. So they're using diesel generators to turn the wind turbines. Really? Well, yeah. now there's a thing. And because these, all... these these wind turbines are in the middle of nowhere, you know? Yeah, so yeah, rather yeah. than try and pump electricity back out to them, you know, they're, they're actually got diesel, diesel generators on site that will provide well power. Yeah. yeah, and the and of course all the um all the power companies when you sign up for their fixed rate towers tell you you're getting 100 percent renewable electricity. Yeah. Well, you look at so, this chart, you certainly weren't at 0615 on 4th of September 2024, because it wasn't. Could could we buy more? Five percent of it came from fossil fuels at could, least. Could we buy more from France? You know, France is France has got it's a lot France. of nuclear power stations. Is France? Is these two down here? The, yeah. the, the magenta lines, three percent and three percent. We bought six percent of our stuff from France at that time. Yeah, but yeah. they 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 produce they can produce a lot of power if they want to. I mean, oh, that, that is basically nuclear. Yeah, yeah, they've they've got fifty-eight. Uh, the last count, I think they had fifty-eight nuclear power stations. Now, I'm not yeah. saying I'm not saying they were all commissioned and running. But they certainly had fifty-eight nuclear oh, yeah. power stations. Well, um, so power in France is cheap and plentiful. Uh, and there's a lot of you know, electric heating in France because they can afford to do it. It's dirt cheap. They don't have a big gas network because no, they don't really need it. But you'd be surprised at how much wood they burn. Okay, having lived in France and it's particularly rural France. Yeah, nobody uses electricity to heat your house. You burn wood. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. I'm off down there to Provence in a couple of weeks for another bit of cycling, so I'll have a look. Oh. There then. Uh, have a look because you'll find you'll find these big piles of wood all mm. over the place, especially when you're cycling through the countryside. 
and they're usually covered and drying out. And you know, because yeah. they, they want them to dry out for two or three years, so they, they burn well. But yeah, yeah. there is a massive industry in just burning wood, you know, for domestic heating. Yeah, well, there's plenty of it grows there as well. I mean, I was in yeah. Dordogne last uh, six weeks ago, and it was it was very. Very yeah. wooded and very nice indeed. It's it's a massive country. You 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 forget how big France is. I think it's like two and a half, three times the size of Britain with a smaller population. Something like that. Well, yeah. yeah. So, John, that's about it for me. I think tonight. Um, well, I think that's been quite illuminating. Um, and I think it it shows a few flaws in the Labour Party strategy when it comes to the the drive to net zero. Um, I, w- I wouldn't, I mean, it's not a, a flaw in just the Labour Party strategy. No, it's, it's not. Everybody's strategy. Because yeah. the Tories, I mean, this is just the Tories on overdrive. Yeah. And the Lib Dems much the same and the Greens much the same. There's, only, I think reform is the only party that's starting to um, push back against this. But I think the more people begin to understand it, Rather than view yeah. it as some you know big thing that the government are doing, it's nothing to do with us. Well, actually, it is going to be something to do with it, with you when you're halfway through Corrie and the lights go out. <laughs> You'll notice that, like yeah. you and I can remember from fifty years ago, the power cut to the seventies. You certainly will. Certainly uh, and will and by the way, we're much more dependent on electricity for our normal life today than we ever were when you and I were growing yeah. up. Um, yeah, and you, yeah, and you have to remember now that. You know, you've got so many, so many essential services require electricity. Exactly, exactly. You know, and people, people will effectively die if you don't keep the lights on. Yeah. Well, there's a cheery thought to end the evening. It's <laughs> but anyway, kind of true. Yeah. Well, I think there's um there's a lot more questions to be asked around the uh, around the carbon chronicles, and um, yeah. I think Latimer and I will continue to dig into them. Let's do it. Let's do it. I've enjoyed that, John, as ever. And I uh, hope other people would have seen our conversation and the presentation and learned something from it too. Indeed. We've come to the end of the road tonight. Unveil the truth, not out of sight. Net zero plans, they clash and fight. Agenda dreams in dimming.